Hi guys. All right, I got some questions from page uh, 268 on solving some, simplifying some radical expressions or uh, using the properties of radicals. So I'm going to show you a couple examples and hopefully this will help with some of the harder problems on the homework. Um, I received the question from one of you guys out at Nakiska, so I hope the skiing is great out there, but I'm glad to see that you're also trying to get your homework done. So let me do a few examples. First one here, radical, radical 50x squared. First thing you want to do is simplify that into perfect square multiples or primes. There's a couple different ways you could think about doing this problem. This, for me, is a very easy way to recognize. Now, once I have it broken up in that form, I notice that there are some perfect squares there. 25 is a perfect square, and x squared is a perfect square. Answer to this becomes 5x times root 2. One technical difficulty, the final answer is really 5 absolute value of x root 2. The reason I need an absolute value and I only need to use absolute values um, on problems that are even roots. So if I'm finding the odd root of some number, I don't need to use absolute values to clarify anything. But if I'm taking the square root, square roots only work on positive numbers. There's no square root of a negative number. It's not in the real number system at all. So when I take the square root of something that I don't know what it is, Square root of x squared is obvious that it's x, but I have to let the world know that I know that whatever that x is, it's positive. And the absolute value signs identify that I know that it has to also be a positive number. So, there's the answer. A second way to think about this problem is, I could have said this section is really the same thing as rad 2 times rad 25 times rad x squared. And again, I can't do the square root of 2, I can do the square root of 25, and I can do the square root of the x squared. So you can think of separating them out like that, and then again, I get the 5, I get the x, I have to know to put absolute value, and then the root 2 isn't a perfect square, so I just leave it alone. Alright, let's try this next one, cube root. I like to write the things in terms of what they look like in terms of a, a perfect cube. So I rewrite this as negative 8, which is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And w to the 9th could be w to the 3rd times w to the 3rd times w to the 3rd. When I look at it that way, I can see that this can come out as a negative 2. It can be written as negative 2 to the third inside. So the cube root of negative 2 to the third is negative 2. The cube root of w to the third is w. The cube root of w to the third is w. The cube root of w to the third is w. Final answer, negative 2, w to the third. Odd roots can have negative answers. So we don't have to worry about the absolute value situation in that problem. All right, let's get to some of the harder ones. Number 22. Um, the question from one of your students was to do 21, but I'll do 22, and that way you can do 21 all by yourself. All right, first thing I want to do is rewrite that as cube root of 2 over cube root of 9. Now, when you look at that, you might think, well, I'm done. There's nothing I can do. 2 is not, there's no perfect cube root of 2. There's no perfect cube root of 9. And that is true. So you might want to leave that answer. But we learned some rules about working with radicals, and it is not proper to leave this answer. I can't leave a radical in the bottom of a fraction. It's just something you don't want to do. So, not allowed. How do I deal with that? 
Well, I could rationalize this fraction. I need a perfect number under this radical so that I can write the number without a radical. Now, I can't just go changing numbers unless I use the magic of the number one. So, number one, I can multiply this fraction by the number one, and it doesn't change it. I'm going to get a little bit tricky, though. I can use lots of different number ones. For example, I could use 2 over 2, or 10 over 10, 8 over 8, 1,000 over 1,000. All of those are 1. I can multiply by that fraction, doesn't change the value one little bit. But those are not good choices. I want to multiply it by something that will change the inside of that cube root to some number that's a perfect cube. Now, um, it's helpful to know some of the perfect cubes. And I don't know if you know any of them or not, but it's a good idea to make a little list on a note card. And oftentimes, these numbers become helpful to know. So, if we wanted to make a little list, I could do, um, let's see, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is, anybody know 4 cubed? Let me think here. Uh, how about 64? Um, 5 cubed, 125, 6 cubed, 216. You can kind of continue that if you want, but that's, that's good enough for now. Um, but, so, on that perfect cube list, 27. I could get that 9 to be a 27 by simple multiplying. What could I multiply it by? 3. So, the special value of 1 I'm going to use has a 3 in it. It's going to be cube root of 3 over cube root of 3. That will work very nicely for what we need. Watch what happens. I'm multiplying it by 1, so I'm not changing its value, but I'm changing how it looks. Cube root of 6 over cube root of 27. Nice! Cube root of 27. I know that. 3. So, 3 over cube root of 6 over 3 is the final answer for that problem. So, 